Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is my recommendations video for March Mystery Madness 2023. Yay! I love doing recommendation videos for mysteries and I have quite the stack in front of me so I'm not going to say too much about each book but I will say why I think it fits the prompt. Now, I have books specifically related to the theme, which this year is spring cleaning. And I have recommendations for each of the four prompts. Now, if you don't know what March Mystery Madness is, I am going to put a link to my announcement video in the comment section in the description box below and <clears throat> in the cards up above here. And I'm also including in the description box the, our link tree with links to all of the social media pages, all the different ways that you can get involved, and a list of the co-hosts for this month-long mystery event. Okay, so let's just dive right into this. I have two books that actually have spring cleaning in the title. I was super proud of myself for finding these. First up, we have The Spring Cleaning Murders by Dorothy Canal. These are, this is part of the Ellie Haskell mystery series. This is a cozy mystery series set in England and Ellie Haskell is uh, our amateur sleuth. And so, um, yeah, I was super excited to find this one. In this one, members of the Chitterton Fells Charwoman's Association start dying. And so Ellie Haskell gets involved in figuring out what's going on. So there you have the spring cleaning murders. The other one that I found is on the other end of the spectrum from a cozy mystery. This is Spring Cleaning by Antonio Manzini. This has been translated from the Italian by, sorry, one second, uh, Anthony Sugar. And this is, I would say this is more of a thriller. Uh, Rocco, the main character, is described as an anti-hero on the back. So two very different styles here, uh, but both have spring cleaning in the title. So I was super proud of myself for finding that. Okay, the first prompt is messy, or gritty. So I've got a few choices here um, that show kind of the variety of ways that you could look at this prompt. Let's say the first three are just slightly more gritty uh, on the gritty side of things. Keep in mind this is Janelle style gritty. So I don't really read, you know, horribly, horribly gritty things, but you know, um, for the, these three, it's because they're historical mysteries, they're, they're slightly grittier. So the first one is called Veil of Lies by Jerry Westerton. Westerson, sorry. <clears throat> she describes her series. This is the first in her Crispin Guest series. Um, this says Medieval Mystery. This is a reprint. When they first came out, they were, they were categorized as Medieval Noir. So I thought that was really interesting. This is a series that is set in London in the 1300s, I think. Yes, 1384. Crispin Guest was a knight who lost everything and now has to kind of make his money and survive by becoming a tracker. He finds things for people. So this is only gritty in that, in the sense that it's the 1300s in London and, uh, you know, life, life for the poor, let's say, uh, is not, you know, all roses and tulips. <laughs> so the first one is um, Veil of Lies. <clears throat> and then we also have Wine of Violence by Priscilla Royal. This is another historical mystery, the first in this series, set in 1270. And our main character is Eleanor of Winthorpe. And in this book, she is appointed as the new prioress of Tyndall on the East Anglian coast. And it's, it's 
a monastery or whatever that has both monks and nuns. Um, there's, the, there's not a ton of those, but there were more of them in, the, in medieval time. And so um, it's the Order of Font, Fontevrod. And uh, I really like this series, uh, but I will admit they are slightly grittier. Um, <clears throat> you know, what happens to people and the, the murders are maybe a little more <laughs> gross. <laughs> but there's not a ton of on the page violence. You just learn about it after the fact. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy this one as well. And then <clears throat> we have The Seeker by S.J. McLean. This is also London, but this is 1654. So this is during the time of Cromwell after, um, so Charles I has been beheaded. There has been the Civil War and now Cromwell is ruling. I forget what he called himself. Um, and Damien Seeker is an agent for the Lord Protector. Oh, I think that's what he called himself. Cromwell called himself the Lord Protector. I really enjoyed this one. This one was really good. And this is one where I would say that it's gritty, but it could have been grittier than it was. Um, it was, everything was handled really well. And I had no problem reading this one at all. I really enjoyed this one. Okay, next up, we have Singapore Sapphire by A.M. Stewart. This is the first in the Harriet Gordon series. And this one I would say is messy more than gritty. Um, and that's because of people's um, relationships and reputations are a little bit messy in this one. Harriet Gordon goes to Singapore in 1910 to help her brother. He's there running a school and she has to leave London. She feels that she has to leave London. She had been involved in the suffragette movement. Um, she had spent some time in prison. She had been force fed and she just felt like she needed to leave to get her reputation back. And, um, and then there's other characters in the book as well. The inspector, Robert Curran, also has some messy <laughs> relationships. Um, so that's why I think this fits this prompt. This is a really great series. I love the time period. I love that it's set in Singapore. Um, it was a really interesting mystery. Okay, next up. We have A Famine of Horses by P.F. Chisholm. This is the first in her Sir Robert Carey series. Um, <laughs> this cover <laughs> is hilarious, um, but that's because it was originally written in the, um, yeah, in 1994. I love, first of all, that the introduction was, or the foreword was written by Sharon K. Penman. Awesome. Um, I really love this series. Um, Sir Robert Carey is a real historical person. It's during the time of Elizabeth I, and he is sent north. It's 1592. He is sent north to become, to take up his position as Deputy Warden of the West March. And so I'm including it in this prompt because there are definitely messy political situations <laughs> happening during this time period, but I really enjoyed this, the setting, the characters, and the, the mystery was really good in this series. Okay, and then we have Murder at the Brightwell by Ashley Weaver. Now this is very different from the, the other ones that I've been showing you. This is a, kind of on the cozier side. This is set in England in the 1930s, and I'm including it here because there are some definite messy relationships happening in this book. The main character is Amory Ames, she is married to <clears throat> Miles and their marriage is a little bit rocky. Miles is kind of well known as a playboy and um, she goes to help her former fiance, Gil Trent, and they're at this hotel and then, <clears throat> then there is a, uh, a murder. Her husband shows up. So she's got her husband and her ex-fiance and you know, those relationships are definitely messy in this book, but this was really fun. This was definitely more on the lighthearted side, but I really did enjoy this one as well. Okay, <clears throat> and then we have the Joanna Stafford series by Nancy Billy. This is the second in the series called The Chalice. The first one is called The Crown. This is set in 
this the second one is set in 1538 in England and Joanna Stafford is an aristocrat who turns into a novice nun in the first book and so there is there is a lot of kind of a messy political situations it's a slightly I would say it's slightly gritty because of the time period but I really enjoy this series as well Henry VIII is on the throne and uh, <clears throat> yeah that one was really fun okay and then we have a modern day one this is whiskey from small glasses by Denzel Mayrick this is set in Scotland and the main character is DCI Daily and this one is slightly gritty it's not horrible the body of a young woman is washed up on an idyllic beach on the west coast of Scotland and DCI Daily is dispatched from Glasgow to lead the investigation he does have a troubled marriage so there's some messy relationships as well I also included this because the victim is washed up on the beach so I thought that's perfect you could also count it for lather or rinse possibly <laughs> if you want to be literal um, so yeah whiskey from small glasses by Denzel Merrick and then last but not least for the messy or gritty category we have Little Black Lies by Sharon a. Bolton. we were inseparable until the day she killed my sons this one is messy because of messy relationships you have um, a small island and best friends and then your best friend kills your sons so I would say that that's pretty messy right <laughs> I love I love Sharon Bolton so yeah there you have it for messy slash gritty let's move on to lather this is a book about or this is a category where you read a mystery about a cop or a detective who is cleaning up um, another good way to look at this is um, cold cases um, you know so they could be cleaning up the streets cleaning up corruption or cleaning up a case that has been sitting around for a very long time a cold case so I've got a number in here so first up we have the Ursula Blanchard series by Fiona Buckley the Rob Sart mystery or to shield the Queen is the first in the series this is historical mystery uh, taking place at during the time of Queen Elizabeth and Ursula Blanchard it um, she's a spy basically for Queen Elizabeth so I, I'm putting it here because basically Ursula cleans up <laughs> situations for the Queen I really like this series it's uh, it's a great time period I love that time period of Elizabeth the first and Ursula is a great character she's a strong woman and uh, I love that she's the main character in this series okay and then we have the Rosalind Thorne series by Darcy Wilde this is the newest in the series so this is a book that I'm actually planning to read during March Mystery Madness and um, this is the series is called the uh, useful woman and so our main character Rosalind Thorne um, is kind of she's not really part of the upper class sort of but she just she doesn't have any money and she needs a way to support herself and so she's found a way to do that by being useful to people um, she helps society ladies in need and um, and so that's why I'm counting it she kind of cleans up for, for people this is a fun series this is set in the Regency time period which I love as well okay and then we have miss the mrs. Hudson series by Martin Davies this one is a literal interpretation of the prompt because mrs. Hudson is the housekeeper and there is another character in this called Flossie who is the maid and they literally clean up so she's the housekeeper for Sherlock Holmes but she's the main character in this series I really enjoy this series so this is set in London in the late 1800s this is the second one in the series Mrs. Hudson and the Malabar Rose the first one in the series is Mrs. Hudson and the Spirit's Curse and this is a really great series I really enjoy that one as well 
Full Dark House by Christopher Fowler is the very first in the Peculiar Crimes Unit series. And I am counting this here because there is a case from 40 years before and the killer returns. So there's a cold case involved in this. I love this Peculiar Crimes Unit series. The inspectors are Bryant and May and this is just, it's a quirky, lighthearted, funny series set in London and I really like that one as well. Okay, and then we have A Shot in the Dark by Lynn Truss. This is a historical mystery series set in Brighton in the 1950s. Constable Twitten is our main character. He is brand new to the police force and I'm including this one here because his inspector um, and I always forget the inspector's name. The inspector believes that he has cleaned up the streets. There was a, a bit of a massacre a few years before, and now he is under the impression that there is no more crime to clean up in Britain, in, uh, sorry, in Brighton, and Constable Twitten knows differently, so that's why I'm including this one here. This one is also quirky. Um, it's slightly darker maybe than what you might expect from looking at um, um, at the covers, but I love this series as well. Okay, and then we have No Cure from, for the Dead by Christine Trent. This is um, the first in her uh, Florence Nightingale series. So I'm, in, in, I'm including this because Florence Nightingale is well known for cleaning up the reputation of nurses and also a huge part of her her philosophy of nursing is cleaning, is making sure that there's a sterile environment. So I thought this would count. Um, this is a really fun series. So it's set in the Victorian time period. Um, the main character is Florence Nightingale. And so this is a great um, Victorian era historical mystery series to check out. Okay, and then we have the Mrs. Jeffries series by Emily Brightwell. This is a, also Victorian time period. This is definitely a cozy, and this is another literal interpretation. Mrs. Jeffries is the housekeeper for a Scotland Yard inspector, and her and the rest of the staff um, get heavily involved in solving his cases for him. So this is another literal uh, one where the detective is literally cleaning up. And then Her Royal Spiness by Reese Bowen. The entire series won't count for this prompt, but the first one definitely will. Um, this is historical mystery set in the 30s. Georgie, Lady Georgiana Hranach, is 34th in line to the throne. Her brother is the Duke in Scotland, but they have no money whatsoever. And so in this first book, she goes to London and she takes up uh, work cleaning other people's houses. Uh, she's trying to do it under the radar, of course, because she doesn't want the queen or anyone else finding out what she is doing. So she is literally cleaning up as well. This is a fantastic, lighthearted historical mystery series. Okay, and then we have um, A Murder at Rosamond's Gate, which is the first in the Lucy Campion series. Sorry, I forgot her name for a second. This is set in 16, um, in the mid 1600s. The first one was set in 1665, I think. This is the second one from The Charred Remains, which is 1666. And our main character, Lucy, is a chambermaid in the house of a, she's a maid in the house of a magistrate. Um, so yeah, I really like this series as well. I really enjoy the time period and the mysteries were always really interesting in that series. Okay, then we have Dandy Gliver and the Proper Treatment of Bloodstains by Catriona McPherson. This is from her Dandy Gliver series set in Scotland in the 1920s. This one in particular um, counts because in this particular story, Dandy goes undercover as a maid to solve a mystery. So the, the rest of the series doesn't count for this, but, um, but this one especially does. And this is a series that I think it's okay to read them out of order. Um, and so if you just want to dive in with the proper treatment of blood stains and see what you think, then that's a good idea. Okay, and then we have Exit by Belinda Bauer. This one, 
Um, I went kind of in a, uh, maybe in a unique direction. The main character of this book is Felix Pink, who is uh, retired, he is widowed, and he volunteers as an exeteer, which is a, vol a, vol a volunteer group that helps people die. And so a huge part of his job is to clean up afterwards to ensure that there is nothing you know, uh, messy or nothing for the family to, to find afterwards. <laughs> so that's why I'm including it here. This one was really good. Um, it was different. Um, yeah, it, this one was a really great mystery. Okay, and then we have The Bone Garden by Tess Gerritsen. This is technically part of the Rosolian Isles series, but um, this one you could definitely read on its own. Um, this one has uh, a cold case. A woman finds bones in her garden in rural Massachusetts. And, um, and then we go back in time to Boston in the 1830s to find out the story of those bones. I really, really enjoy this one. The Daughter of Time by Josephine Tay. This is a cold case mystery for sure. Our main character is Inspector Grant. He is in the hospital and while he is in the hospital, he is bored out of his mind and he decides to try and solve the mystery of who killed the princes in the tower. Uh, of course, this is during the time of King Richard III. And so this is, <laughs> this is a cold case. I love this book. Um, so it's part of a series, but you can definitely read this series out of order. Josephine Tay wrote a fantastic mystery here, um, 1951. That is a great option. And then we have Tears of the Giraffe by Alexander McCall Smith. This is the second book in the number one ladies detective agency. This is set in Botswana. And I'm including it here because she looks at a cold case in this. She learns about an American man who disappeared many years before and she uh, investigates that case. So, um, and yeah, this was a, a particularly good one in the series. And then last but not least, we have The Complaints by Ian Rankin. This is the first in a series, so this is not Rebus. The main character is Malcolm Fox and he works in the Complaints and Conduct Department for the police. So his job is to clean up the police department. This is classic Ian Rankin. I really enjoyed this one as well. Okay, now we are moving on to the third prompt, which is rinse. Read something on the cozier side or read a classic mystery. So I'm going to start with some classic mysteries that I want to recommend to you. First up is Towards Zero by Agatha Christie. This is one of the Superintendent Battle series, but I really loved this one. Um, I think it's kind of an underrated Agatha Christie. I loved the setup for this one or, or like how, how she put the story together. There is a famous criminologist called Mr. Treves who believes that um, the murder, you know, murder mysteries all begin with the murder, but he thinks that that is the end, zero hour. And he says you need to back up and look at what leads to that murder. And, uh, and that's how she formatted this mystery. And yeah, really, really good. Green for Danger by Christiana Brand. This is set in a military hospital in England during World War II and someone is killed and there are only six possible Suspects. This one was really, really good. I really enjoyed that one. The Moving Toy Shop by Edmund Crispin. This is part of his uh, Gervais Fenn series. Gervais Fenn is an Oxford professor of English language and literature. And this one in the series was really, really fun. There is a toy shop in Oxford on the Ifley Road and it contains the strangled body of a gray haired woman when a friend of Fenn's enters it one night. The next morning, the toy shop has vanished 
and a busy grocer's store occupies the site. And nobody is surprised. Interesting, right? And then we have Trent's Last Case by E.C. Bentley. This one is very early. This one was published in 1912. And I really love this one um, because our, <laughs> our detective in this one, Trent, um, investigates, is convinced that he solved the crime. He gathers everybody together to say, this is what happened, and it turns out that he was wrong, and they need to continue investigating. <laughs> so it was very entertaining. I really enjoyed that one as well. Okay, and then we have The Han Jin Murders by Saishi Yoko Mizo. This is um, a Japanese Golden Age mystery. This has been translated by Louise Heel Kawei. Kawe. And um, it was written in the 40s, set in the 30s, and the setup for this one is fantastic. It is 1937, there is a wedding being planned, and then the night of the wedding, there is a terrible scream followed by the sound of eerie music. There is no trace but a bloody samurai sword thrust into the pristine snow outside the house. I loved the setup for this one, so fascinating. And then uh, Georgette Hare's Footsteps in the Dark. This one was just really, really fun. We have a group of four siblings, though, sorry, three siblings who um, inherit the Priory. And there's just some weird things going on in the house. This one was really fun. I loved the banter between the siblings and even the staff at the house. This was written in 1932 and is a really kind of a fun, rompy style mystery. <clears throat> Death in Captivity by Michael Gilbert. This is set during World War II and this one also has the advantage of a very unique setting. A man is found dead in an escape tunnel underneath an Italian prisoner of war camp. So it's a locked room mystery. There's a closed circle of suspects because it's a prisoner of war camp. It is fascinating. The author himself, Michael Gilbert, spent time during World War II in an Italian prisoner of war camp. So, um, yeah, though it's just such a fascinating mystery. He wrote this in 1952, and I really enjoyed that one. Let's move on to some mysteries that are on the cozier side. We have The Affair of the Mutilated Mink Coat by James Anderson. This one was just fun. It's set in the 1930s in a big house, the house of an earl in England, and I mean, it's just got everything. Secret passages, a house party, fantastic staff with a great butler. The Earl himself is decidedly starstruck. And so he invites his favorite film star and Hollywood producer to come to the house. So it's just got everything. And um, I just, I loved it. It was fun and lighthearted and yeah, very, very entertaining. Malice in Maggoty by Joan Hess. This is the first in the Maggoty series. This is definitely on the cozier, cozier thigh side of things. It's set in Arkansas in a very small town. Maggoty is about 800 people. And <laughs> Arlie Hanks, our main character, comes home from, she was in the city somewhere, New York. She comes back to become the chief of police in Maggoty. And so you get this, you know, hilarious relationship with her mom. There are very, very quirky people who live in this small town. I just really, I just really liked it. It is quirky and funny, um, Ar but Arlie is great. Arlie is smart um, and, you know, definitely worthy of her position as the chief of police. I just really enjoy this series a lot. <clears throat> then we have Death in Castle Dark by Veronica Bond. This is the first in the dinner and a murder mystery series. I don't read a ton 
of this style of cozy mysteries um, because I tend to get really annoyed with the amateur sleuth. But this one was written the way I like it. This one was written with an amateur sleuth that I could totally get behind. The setting for this is fantastic. There's a castle in, I think this is set in Virginia. I can't remember. <clears throat> But Nora Blake is our main character. She's an actor and she gets hired by the guy who owns this castle to be part of, um, you know, dinner and a mystery troupe. So he writes the mystery stories. People pay, they come in, they have their dinner and then the actors put on this mystery that everybody then has to solve. It just sounds so fun. And this one was fantastic. Great mystery, an amateur sleuth that I can get behind. Really worth checking out. Okay, Death at the Dance by Verity Bright. This is a historical mystery series set in the 20s. This is actually the second one in the series, but this is the one that I read first and I loved this one. Our main character is Lady Eleanor Swift. She is an adventurer who has had to come back to England because her uncle has passed away and she has um, inherited the house and the title. And so she's got, um, you know, she's got to figure out how to live this different style of life but i love her relationship with her butler and even the rest of the staff she's got a great relationship with the staff in the house but she's got this like the dialogue between her and the butler are fantastic and um in this particular one she goes to a dance at um at a neighboring manor house and um her uh her boyfriend lance is um <laughs> is found standing over a dead colonel brandishing a silver uh, a silver candlestick in front of the family safe that is wide open and empty and so the police arrest him and so she has to investigate and clear his name uh yeah i i really really love this series and this one in particular was a really good one the case of the canterville codicil by P. J. Fitzsimmons is the first in the Anti Beaujolais series. This is also historical mystery set in the 20s. 20, yeah, the 20s. Um, this one is great. It's very lighthearted. It's got a locked room mystery in a country house. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of wordplay and puns and um, yeah, really, really fun. Wouldn't It Be Deadly by D.E. Ireland. This is the first in the Eliza Doolittle and Henry Higgins series. This was so much fun. This is set in the Edwardian time period. These are characters from George Bernard Shaw's play, The Pygmalion, or if you're more familiar with the movie, My Fair Lady. Um, and the authors do such a great job of, of writing these characters and I loved it. It was funny, great mystery, great time period. Now, I, at first I wasn't going to do anything for the fourth prompt, which is repeat, because I thought, well, you know, I don't know what mystery you need to reread or what uh, author you've read before that you want to read more from. But then when I got thinking about it, I thought there was a few more ways to interpret this prompt. First up, a case that has been solved, finished, but then it turns out that they were wrong and it needs to be investigated again. So a repeat there. We have The Case is Closed by Patricia Wentworth. This is from 1937. This one was fantastic. Um, Jeffrey Gray has already spent a year in prison for the murder of his uncle, but <clears throat> his wife Marion knows that he's innocent and his young cousin Hillary uh, believes so as well and so she starts investigating uh, to discover if she, the, the truth if she can get her cousin Jeffrey out of jail and so this one was great we also have Ordeal by Innocence by Agatha Christie Jacko Argyle was sent to prison for the murder of his mother and then um, a few and then he dies in prison from an illness 
And um, two years later, Gen um, Arthur Calgary shows up and says, I was his alibi, he could not have done it. So then again, they have to investigate and find out what really happened. A Most Peculiar Malaysian Murder by Shamini Flint. This is the first in the Inspector Singh series. And in this one, he is sent to investigate um, in Malaysia, the trial of Chelsea Liu. She is a beauty queen accused of killing her abusive husband. Um, so this one isn't technically closed. She's, she's just on trial. Um, but he starts to investigate the case again um, because he's not convinced that she that she did it. And then we have My Sister's Grave by Robert Dugani. <clears throat> the main character in this is Trus Tracy Crosswhite. She is a detective in Seattle and she has spent 20 years questioning whether or not the man who went to jail for the murder of her sister actually did it and then events occur and she starts investigating that case again so definitely um a repeat investigation this one was really good all right <clears throat> then another way to look at this repeat um prompt is um an homage or a pastiche so it's been done and then someone else decides to do it again or do their own version of it um as an homage or a pastiche so I've got the Decagon House of Murders by Yukito Ayatsuji, which is an homage to And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. This is set in Japan and translated by Holing, Holing Wong. This, um, and this one was a fantastic isolated closed circle mystery. Then we have the entire series by Andrew Wilson. The first one is a talent for murder and this is a homage or pastiche to Agatha Christie and her books. Agatha Christie is actually the main character in this series and I really like this series. This first one imagines what took place when she disappeared for those 11 days in 1926. Very very entertaining. Uh, the next one in that series is Death in a Desert Land and she's off to Baghdad. And then the fourth one in the series is I Saw Him Die, and she heads up to Scotland. And so yeah, that's a fantastic series. And then last but not least is The Dead Mountaineers Inn by Boris and Arkady Strugatsky. This has been translated by Josh Billings, translated from the Russian. This one is interesting because these two are famous in Russia for their science fiction and then they decided to write this and they decided to write, <clears throat> what did they call it? One more last write for the detective genre. This was written in the 70s, I think. Yes, 1970. It's an isolated closed circle mystery, but of course the Arcady brothers had to put their own specific spin on it. And so this one was different and very, very entertaining. Okay, <laughs> there you have it. This was a really long video. I debated splitting it up and then I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna do it all in one video. But these are my recommendations for the prompts. I hope you got some good ideas and I hope you got some, um, you know, saw some new ways potentially of interpreting the prompts. I would love to know in the comment section down below if you're participating in March Mystery Madness, if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. And I will see you for another video soon. Bye.